Good evening, Destiny. Get your Bibles. We will read. We will read from Genesis chapter 32. We will read verses 9 to 12. Genesis 32, 9 to 12. This is the first recorded prayer in the entire Bible. This is the prayer of a man named Jacob, who is also called Israel. And he prayed this, giving us lessons on how to pray to God using the Word of God. Hallelujah. It's a prayer that joins God's word with prayer. Hallelujah. So let's read from verse 9 to 12 of Genesis 32. I'm reading from NIV. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, O Lord who said to me, Go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faith, faithfulness you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two groups. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me and also the mothers with their children. But you said... I will surely make you prosper and will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. I want you to notice two verses. Verse 9, it says, O God of my Father, O Lord who said to me. God spoke to him and now he is bringing this up to the Lord and saying, Lord, I'm telling you what you told me. <laughs> Amen. Here's the other one in verse 12. But you have said, in other words, Lord, these are the circumstances of my life, but I am at peace. I am hopeful because of what you said to me. Hallelujah. So, by this lesson, we will connect our series of word habit with the next series of weeping habit, which is about praying to God. And about praying for others, about praying so that things will take place in this world. So let's, let's pray right now for, for the Holy Spirit to help us and feed us. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we pray that your word will become bread for the hungry. That your word will become life in us, O oh Lord. And we will be activated. Our faith will become active. We take hold of what you said. We take hold of your word. We are sorry in the past. We tried to believe in God without hearing from God. We tried to have religion without the promises of God, knowing what God wants for us to believe. So bless this word tonight, Lord, and help us understand how we can connect Reading the Word of God, feeding ourselves with the Word of God, and bringing it in the area of prayer. This is what we ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Hallelujah. In the past, mga nagliligad naton, uh, I'm sure many of you have tried praying to God. How many of you have tried uh, doing praying? You pray to God. Raise your hands. All right. Now, without the word of God, our praying to God becomes a monologue. It's just one-way traffic from us to him, from us to him. Because we did not have time or maybe interest to read God's word. We have not heard from him. It's just a one-way traffic. We speak to him. But he is not allowed to speak to us. 
Now that we have learned that we need the Word of God, it is essential. We need to learn that the Word of God is essential in our prayer life. Your prayer life will never be the same. Hallelujah. If you follow some of the lessons we will learn from the prayer of Jacob. Before we prayed like this, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Come on. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, that is a good prayer, but that, that is also a problem. Because if without the word of God, what kind of will do you know that will uh, take place on earth? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That cannot happen if you don't know the will of God. You cannot even ask that if you do not know the will of God. The will of God is revealed in his word. So by, by knowing the word of God and bringing it to him in prayer, hallelujah, you, you are standing in partnership with the Lord. God wants to do something on earth, and you want something to be done on earth, and that connects together, we become effective. Lord. Hallelujah. So, knowing what to do, knowing what to say, knowing what's next, you have a sense of direction in life, your prayer life, as I said, will never be the same again. Here's a man, Jacob, uh, he, he was a blessed man. I know, uh, if you have read who this Jacob is. In fact, after Jacob, in the nation of Israel, people would say, the blessings of the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, is always included. You know, Jacob is included in all this type of identification of God. We, we pray to the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. But here, of course, in this verse, it's only, oh, God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, and of course, he is Jacob. He is not mentioning his name yet. He learned. He learned how to pray. He learned how to pray because he understood what God already said to him. Not only to him. He learned what God said about him. About him, Jacob. So Jacob is a blessed man. In chapter 32, this, this, his blessedness was being put to test. How many of you are blessed? Raise your hands. You are so blessed. God blessed you. Uh, circumstances in life has blessed you. Hallelujah. Your parents has blessed you. They pronounce blessing on your life. Your pastor probably have prayed for you and blessed you and prophesied over your life. Many people, your friends, people who love you and who know you that you are a Christian, probably have prayed for you and blessed your life. You are a blessed man. But being a blessed man, that does not mean that you will have no troubles. In fact, the more blessed you are, the more troubles there will be because blessedness will be put to test. So let me enumerate first how blessed this man is. For example, for example, in Genesis 25, 23, chapter 25 of Genesis, verse 23. The mother of Jacob was pregnant. And during that time, Rebecca was disturbed. Not disturbed, yeah, because the, it seems like there is first world war inside her stomach. Something is happening inside. So he asked, she asked the Lord. And verse 23, the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, the older will serve the younger. Now, Jacob and his twin brother Esau are not yet born, but God, speaking to Rebekah, already identified that there are two, not only two persons inside, 
but two nations inside. Nations are inside their stomach. Hallelujah! Because these two babies will grow and progress and multiply and multiply and become nations. So, the description is two nations are in your womb, two peoples within you will be separated. They, are, they will not be the same. They will not be friendly with each other. They will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. So then time for their birth. Esau was born first. So Esau was the elder. The Lord said the elder will serve the younger. The younger boy that was born after Esau, the younger boy was Jacob. He was named Jacob because when the midwife probably was pulling Esau out, because Esau came first, when she was pulling Esau out, they noticed that a hand was holding on Esau's uncle here. So just like that. That was Jacob. Jacob was holding his heel and going out like that. And so they named him Jacob. Because it is an act as if he was trying to get something out of Esau. He was trying to uh, uh, pull Esau, Esau back. <laughs> He's a deceiver. Jacob means deceiver. That's the meaning of his name. So, however, what the Lord said is that the younger will serve and the older will serve the younger. In other words, in value and in rank, Jacob is much, much blessed than Esau. Esau became the forefathers of Arab nations. Jacob became the forefathers of Israelite or Hebrew nations. Are you following this? Nations and these nations were blessed. In Jacob, Israel was blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Then, because of what happened, Jacob tried to deceive his father, since he is the deceiver. He tried to cheat his brother about his birthright. Manami, magluto si Jacob sang batsoy. So nagluto sa sang namit-namit yung nga batsoy, nagabot ang iyang utod, yung gutom-gutom si Isaw. Oh, no, 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 no. Bakarita, sige, bakarita na lang. Hindi lang batsoy, kaya may noodles, no? Okay. <laughs> bakarita, luto ya. No, gutom si Isaw, sila niya, can I have a bowl of that soup? Si Jacob naman, gin, siguro gin panamit-namit. Ito, dilap-dilap pa siya. Siguro gin na garit-garit. Sige, blah. This is nice. So, Esau said, can I have a bowl of, of that soup? Jacob said, you have to sell me your birthright first. That's what happened. Esau was cheated by, by Jacob. And the blessings also, he was cheated because Jacob deceived the father. He pretended like he is Esau. You can read the story. It's very nice. Good story. And uh, the father Isaac was uh, already about almost blind. And he thought Jacob was Esau. And he was about to release blessing. And instead of giving it to Esau... He gave it to Jacob. He did not know it was Jacob. He was deceived. So Jacob was blessed by deception. Through deception, rather. Through deception, Jacob received the blessing from Esau and received the blessing from his father. You can read, the blessing was so good. In fact, when, when, when Esau arrived and said, how about me? Where is my blessing? Isaac, maybe... Scratch his head and said, no more. I gave it to your brother. So Esau hated Jacob. Esau hated Jacob. Malachi, the book of Malachi, prophet Malachi said, I hate Jacob. I, uh, I hate Esau. I love Jacob. God loved Jacob. He is so blessed. 
the love of God was upon him. He was the apple of God's eye even though he was not yet straight. He was still a deceiver. So, um, ang mother ni Jacob, paborito niya si Jacob, ganun sila niya, anak, palagyo ka lang. You run away because your brother is planning to kill you. So you run away. <laughs> they made a story that the, the mother does not want Jacob to get a wife in their, in, their, uh, in their place. So he ran away. When he was running away, he stopped in a place in the city of Luz. And he was so tired and he slept. When he was sleeping, he had a dream. Jacob had a dream. This dream has become a great Bible Sunday school story. The ladder. You know, the ladder that connects to heaven and angels ascending and descending. So that's the story. And during that time, when Jacob was sleeping in a dream, God appeared to him. Let me read the blessing of, of that dream. Okay? Here. There above it, Genesis 28, 13 to 15, above the ladder stood the Lord. He said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All people on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you. This is what God is saying to him in the dream. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land and I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Now let me ask you, if you were Jacob, full of fear, trying to run away, you are an escapee and uh, you are fearful, you are alone and then you see this dream, will you not be feeling blessed? And encourage that God says, I will be with you and I will, uh, I will watch over you wherever you go until I have done what I have promised you. So he's a man who has received the promise of God. So the Lord has blessed him. He went to find a wife. Not only one wife, he found two wives and then two slave girls of those wives. So he... He had four wives. That's the story of Jacob. And that is why he has produced 12 tribes in Israel. Are you following the story? The deceiver was deceived. That is why he had four wives. So he was also deceived. Now, after a while, he was already blessed. The Lord spoke to him. He, he did not yet know how to pray, but the Lord was continuously speaking to him. Let me ask you this, my brothers and sisters. How many of you know deep in your heart that even though you do not know how to pray yet, God has already started speaking to you? How many of you have experienced that? Raise your hand. I know people, they have heard God. They, ha they are so happy about God's promises in their heart. And yet you ask them to pray even for food. Okay, let's eat. But you pray. You know, I, I have this brother uh, in the Lord in the early days of Destiny City Church or First Assembly. He was a military man. In one Bible study, there was food served. And so uh, the Bible study leader, nagsala siya silinya. Can I ask brothers and so to, to pray for our meal? So we bowed down our head. But he was only about two weeks old in the Lord. Joyfully saved. But he does not know how to pray. Especially in the group. He was perspiring in, in sweat. He was sweating. And he was just closing his eyes. Maybe for several minutes. You know, very awkward. And then eventually, eventually... Uh, somebody caught up and, and tried to, to save him from, from not being able to pray. Now, that is not a unique experience of one man. I believe many of you have experienced that. 
you are told to pray, now pray. And you don't know how to pray. You only heard God. You heard the Bible. You believe the word of God. But you don't know how to pray. This man Jacob has the same experience. God would come to him in the night. God would talk to him. Angels of the Lord would appear to him and talk to him. But he doesn't know how to pray. But I want to suggest to you that Jacob, in all this experience, have accumulated all these experiences. Ginatipon niya na, ginatipon niya lang. Plus man bala sinyo, ginatipon niyo lang, nakabati ka mo sermon, nakabati ka mo wali, nagbasa ka mo sa Bible, nakakita ka mo sa video, na-encourage ka, hallelujah! Nabasa ka sa scripture, encourage ka, you just keep it, keep it in your heart. Now, si Jacob, amo man na ang natabo sa iya, God spoke to him in a dream, he was so blessed, he learned to trust God in all his ways there in in uh, in faraway place. He prospered there, and then God said, "Now, God said to him, "I want you to pack up your things and go home." Genesis chapter thirty-one, verse three. The Lord said to Jacob, Go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. Go back. It's time for you to go back. Bring your children, bring your family and your wealth. Go back to your relatives. I will be with you. Verse 13, same chapter. The Lord said, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. Wow. The God who appeared to him in that land called Bethel, where there was a ladder, appeared to him and said, Now, I want you to go. I will be with you. Go home. I will be with you. Hallelujah. The Lord followed up this man. He was really following, watching over this man. Wow, what a patience. God has a patience to follow up this man. And so, come this chapter 32. It was reported to him when he was getting ready to go home that his brother is preparing an ambush. So he, he sent spies. And it was reported to him, really, your brother is waiting for you with hundreds and hundreds of soldiers and all kinds of uh, uh, war, war implements. You must be uh, feeling in danger. So, that was the trouble of Jacob. He was now facing danger. He knew God told him to go home. He knew the promise of God. What will he do? His brother hated him. What will he do now? So the story, uh, if you can read later on when you go home, uh, started with this prayer. The best thing he did when he was facing that crisis was to pray. So this is the first recorded prayer in the Bible. That's why I like this prayer because it gives us a very, very good lesson to follow. Here are the lessons. Here are the lessons from this prayer of Jacob. Hallelujah. Number one, we find that when Jacob opened his mouth, it says, then Jacob said, when he opened his mouth, he addressed God. In a very unique way. He said, O oh God of my father Abraham. O oh God of my father Isaac. He connected with the God of his Lolo, grandpa, and the God of his dad, Isaac, and began to speak. You are the one who you have been speaking to me. He said, you told me now to go home. That now I am in trouble because I'm trying to obey you. But first, I want you to notice this. He addressed God as a covenant God. A covenant God who appeared to Abraham. Remember, in those days, there was no funny religions the way we have now. Plenty of funny religions with tiny idols, big idols, with dragon idols, with crab idols, with elephant idols, with... Uh, idols made of fish or whatever idols we have. It was a time that there was less, less understanding about 
God. However, God appeared to Abraham, introduced himself, and Abraham and God made a covenant. In that covenant, Jacob was included. He will be blessed. And the Lord will bless all the children of Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, and all the descendants. Hallelujah. Amen. So he was included. He attached himself to that God who appeared to his Lolo, Abraham, and Isaac. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, Paul said to the Christians, you are also related to the blessings of Abraham. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the promise of God to Abraham is passed on to you. You are included. Amen? That is why when you come to God, you can call God as your covenant God, a, a, a testament God. You know what is a covenant? Covenant is an agreement. Hello? A covenant is an agreement between God and Abraham and, of course, later on, Jacob, Isaac and Jacob. It is an agreement where God speaks conditions and promises and conditions and promises. Hallelujah! It is a covenant that God made. And in the New Testament, we have a covenant, the new covenant in the blood of Jesus, in the person of Jesus. Jesus established a covenant so that we can have a, an agreement, hallelujah, with our God, hallelujah. You can now call God your father. You have a relationship with God. You can talk to God, hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Before, he was not your God. He was not your dad. He was not your father in heaven. But because of Jesus, God has become your father in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. So he said, uh, the Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham, of my father Isaac. He prayed this prayer and started to set his case. He told God about his case. He was asking God, God, I'm now in a terrible condition. My brother is waiting to, to, to attack me and attack my children, the mother and the children. What will happen to us? And then he said, deliver me, Lord, according to your word. You said you will be with me and you will multiply me. You will prosper me. You said. Now listen, this word you said is very powerful in our prayer. Say the word, you said. You can approach God and say, you said that when I repent of all my sins and trust in Jesus, that all my sins will be forgiven. You said that when I receive Jesus in my heart, I will have authority to become your child. You said that if I'm thirsty enough and come to Jesus, that he will give me drink. He will give me water to drink. And out of my inner being will flow rivers of living water. You said that the promise from the Father will be poured out on us in the form of the person of the Holy Spirit. You said that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Hallelujah! You will never abandon me. You said that I will never be left as orphans. I will always have a dad. I will always have a father. Hallelujah! So the, that's the basis of his prayer. The basis of his prayer is relational. I have a relationship with the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. Hallelujah. You have a relationship with the God who created the entire universe through the Lord Jesus Christ. Palakpakan natin ang atong Lord. So you never again should you be feeling endangered or in panic because of you trying to obey what God said. Jacob was obeying what God said. He said, Lord, you are the one who told me to go home now. Amen. And in my attempt to go home now, I have this problem. How many of you have problems right now because you tried to follow Jesus? Raise your hands. 
If you don't have problem, you can go home. Hallelujah. But we have problems because we love Jesus. Because we want to follow Jesus. Troubles come and be prepared to ambush us. Hallelujah. But we can come to our Father. Lord, I am under agreement with you. Under covenant agreement with you. Through Jesus Christ, you will never abandon me. I have hope in my heart. I will never be left alone. Praise God. You will always be with me. Amen. So prayer is a relationally a relational based prayer. We can call on God based on the existing relationship we have with him. We are his children. We are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. We are disciples of the Lord. Now let's go to lesson number two. In this prayer of Jacob, here's the lesson number two. Jacob reminded God what God, what he told him. He reminded God what God told him. Do you understand that? In this prayer, it was okay to come to God. You have a relationship with him and begin to <laughs> sort of remind God. How many of you know that, of course, God already knows? Is it proper to remind God, oh Lord, that don't lipat go out? Is it proper to remind God? Jacob reminded God about what he heard from him. You are the one who spoke this to me. You told me to go home. And then you told me you will, you will help me and I will prosper. Hallelujah. He has a basis to remind God. But of course, God does not need reminder. He does not need reminder. The one who needs reminder is us. Because sometimes we are not so secure about what God told us. We forget what God told us. The Bible tells us a secret. Here's the secret. That the Lord never forgets His covenant with us. Open your Bibles in Psalms 105. Let me show you this verse. Psalms 105, verse 7 to 10. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers His covenant forever. The promise He made for a thousand generations. The covenant He made with Abraham. Hello? He remembers His covenant the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac, he confirmed it to Jacob as a decree to Israel, as an everlasting covenant. He never forgets. We are the one in need of reminding. But it's good to come to our father, like, you know, one day your dad comes to you, hey, Christmas is coming, hallelujah. We will go to Hong Kong. I received my bonus. I will buy ticket. We will have a Christmas vacation in Hong Kong. So as the day go by, Christmas season is coming. You are getting ready and you remind your dad. Dad, are we going to Hong Kong just like you said? Dad said, yes. Following day, dad, <laughs> do you already have a, a ticket? For us, you have booking for us to, to fly to Hong Kong. Dad said, Yes. Following day, Dad, have you, have you booked us in a hotel when we go to Hong Kong? Because we will do Christmas there just as you said. Now, the excitement, hallelujah, of having a promise of God in our hearts, we will remind our Father in heaven. Lord, this is what you said. Amen? There was a time when the nation of Israel, getting ready to enter the promised land, they were already out of Egypt. They were about to enter the promised land, but they had, you know, enemies along the way to Egypt. And one of the enemies is King Balak. 
King Balak had a bad Balak na sirain ang Israel. And so he hired prophet Balaam. Balaam uh, is God's, the Lord's prophet. So he said, Balak said, Prophet Balaam, I will give you money. You curse Israel for me. Balaam said, I cannot do that. What, will I, what I will do is I will just open my mouth. I will just say what God told me to say. And Balaam stood on top of the mountain and he saw Israel spread like that. About two, billion, two million people spread like that. And he was told to pronounce judgment. But Balaam's mouth was controlled by the Lord. When he opened his mouth, he said, God is not a man that he should change his mind. I cannot reverse the blessings God has pronounced on the people of Israel. I can affirm and confirm, but I cannot reverse what he said. God never tells a lie about what he said. It is always good to read the scriptures, and when you go and come to God, you can remind God about what he said to you. Now, you can do it this way. You can remind God what he said to you when you are listening to the sermon of Pastor Ray on a given Sunday. Okay? But I think what God wants to hear from you is, what did you pick from the preaching of Pastor Ray? The, God, the word that applies to you. What, what was it? What was it? And then you go to God and, and carry that. Are you following? Many times you read the Bible, God speaks to you, you take that word. Amen? You say, Lord, this is your word to me. Or sometimes, Pastor Helen, Pastor David, Pastor Shinada can come to you and pray for you. And in their prayer, they will say, Thus saith the Lord. You know, when, when, when the prayer warrior begins to say, Thus saith the Lord, you begin to open your mind and your heart. In a prophetic way, sometimes God speaks uh, to your life and say, Thus saith the Lord, if you will not repent, you will suddenly die. I don't know if, that, if sisters and I can afford to say that. Okay, that, that's it, the Lord. That's it, the Lord. He will surround you with favor. He will make your eyes sensitive to the signal of God. And God will open doors for you. Do not hesitate. Listen to the voice of God behind you speaking. Do not turn to the left, not to the right. Things like that. I can memorize what they said to me when I was being prayed for. When they prayed for me, I, I heard what they were saying and I kept it in my heart. It was only later that I checked and whatever they said to me, it became real. It came to pass. Sometimes God speaks to us in a personal way. Take hold of that. Paul advised Timothy, Timothy, take hold of the prophetic word given to you by the laying on of hands of the leaders of the church. Fight a good warfare with that word. That means use that as a, a weapon. If the Lord has said to you that this is my plan for you, you can take that and say, devil, you cannot persuade me to do something else. This is God's plan for me. How many of you have experienced that kind of special word? Raise your hands. Many. Hallelujah. God will speak to us. Remind God what he told you. This will spice up your prayer. And you will be excited to go to that prayer room and say, Lord, I heard yesterday you have a message for me and you have an encouragement for me. You will answer my prayer. I claim that, Lord. You told me to do this. I'm now acting on it. I am doing it. Lord, help me fulfill it to the finish line. Amen? So, this is valid in this example of Jacob. You remind God as he reminded God what he heard from God. Let's go to the last. Last lesson from this prayer of Jacob. Trust that he will do what he said. I'm trying to simplify this. You heard from God. The reason you are holding on to it is because 
not only that God can speak like that, but God can fulfill what He said. You have to trust the Lord that He can fulfill what He said. Lord, you said, you will prosper me. I will have generations and generations of children. Therefore, now, Lord, I will not be afraid what my brother Esau will do to us. Because you have obliged yourself, Lord, to preserve my children and to preserve their mother so that when we reach Canaan, we will be intact. One family. And that is exactly what happened. The family of Jacob grew there when they went back to to the promised land. And then later on, during a famine, God called Joseph, the favorite son of Jacob. But Joseph was called in a very unique way. <laughs> he was sold as a slave to Egypt. At the age of 30, Joseph became vice president of Egypt. And later on, Jacob knew about Joseph. He went to Egypt, the entire family. They stayed there for 400 years. They multiplied there. And then Moses arose. Moses brought them back to the promised land. Everything that God said about Jacob, the children of Isaac, the children of Abraham, came to pass. Palakpakan natin ang atong Lord. The nation was preserved. Through many, many experiences, the nation was preserved. But that is because God can do what He said He will do. God has the capacity to do what He said He will do. I'm just looking back uh, about the many promises I received from the Lord. Personal promises. God has promised that I will never, never have problem with, with money. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack anything. How many of you believe that He can provide for you? You, you go to God with that prayer. And then while you are praying, it's good to have faith while you are praying. It's bad if you have no faith in God while you are praying. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Hallelujah. Amen? So, now, these are the lessons. We will apply it in our life. Amen? Sunday after Sunday, we'll do the series again. We'll learn, we will learn how to pray. But sufficient today, we'll, we will learn how to connect what we have learned in word habit. Learn the word of God and then bring it to God. Remind God what he, saw, he, he said to us. And then expect God to do what He said He will do. Are you following? Let's bow our heads. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We humble ourselves, Lord, just like Jacob who humbled himself. He is not deserving all the blessings you have done to him and your continued support of him and provisions for him. He humbled himself and you lifted him up. We humble ourselves tonight, Lord, before you. We want to experience full, the fulfillment of all your promise to us. Help us to really pray bringing words that we have heard from you and reminding you what you said to us, expecting that you will fulfill them in our lifetime. Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight I am praying for people who have heard from you. Promised things you have given them, Lord. <laughs> and they have not seen yet the fulfillment of those personal word, those promise they heard from you. But tonight I pray that you will revive their faith in those promise. Things that you have asked and things that you have already answered. Hallelujah. But have not yet come to reality. I pray that tonight they will have the experience, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you bow your heads and as you pray,
I want to invite you to express your faith and confidence in God. The God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. The God who made a covenant with us through Jesus Christ. And you are being reminded about His promise. And tonight you want to express your faith and say, I will pray about this, Lord. I will remind you about your promise to me. Healing, maybe. Provisions, maybe. <coughs> Miracle in your life. Finances, maybe. But you have heard from God. He has a promise for you. I want you to stand up. Maybe I'll requ request all of you to stand up. Stand up. It will be easy for you to respond. And you want to settle things with God tonight. Hallelujah. You have heard from God and you want to respond to God. I want you to come. Come out where you are and come to the front. We will be praying for you. Young people, God has spoken to many. Young people, he is in this church many times. We have plenty of visitors who laid hands on certain people here in the church. I still want to pray that those words you heard will come to pass. It will come to pass. Because God can be trusted in what he says. So get out where you are and come to the front here. Maybe not in a given Sunday that you heard from God. Maybe in your room, in your prayer life, in your prayer room you have heard from God. You are sure it was the Lord who spoke to you. <coughs> Call on the covenant God and say, Lord, you made a covenant through Jesus. When I call on your name, you will answer me. When I seek you with all my heart, I will find you. When I seek for you with all of my heart. Other some or some of you, maybe you need to, to get out of where you are and come to the front for prayer. God answers prayer. We do this because God answers prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Make way for more people to come. Hallelujah. If you are here and you have not yet surrendered your heart to Jesus, this is the best time to surrender your life to Jesus. Come. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's start praying. Let's start praying. You pray for people. Hallelujah. 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 As we come to you and pray for you, I want you to agree. I will agree with you. And I want you to call on, on the Lord. We will agree together. Uh, where two or three agree concerning anything, it shall be done. The Bible tells us. Hallelujah. So now, Lord. It's still clear. The promise has not yet been forgotten. It's still fresh in our spirit, Lord. Trust you, Lord. You are able to fulfill these words of promise. I pray for this young man. I pray, God, the word will not fall to the ground for nothing. It will help you fulfill, Lord.
promises of God is by faith. Let me tell you, you cannot manipulate God, but you can trust God. He is good. You can trust Him to do what is good. You can trust Him to do what He promised. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Let's give thanks to God. Come on, come on. Just begin, begin, begin to be grateful to God. Say, oh Lord, I thank you. You never turn away from your, all your promises, Lord. Raise your hands. We pray. Hallelujah. Lord, you have promises for each person here. You have promises, Lord, for every family represented here. Mga pamilya nga ani dire, unique din kada isa nga kinanglan nila, Lord. Unique circumstances. Tungod kin bless mo sila, Lord, kada mo ila ginatuba mga troubles. Pero Lord, ang imo pulong kamhanan, matarong ka nga Dios. Tumano ni mang imong insaad, O Lord. Hallelujah. Nakita na namon ni in the past. And you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bisan sa mga nagaduha-duha pa, Lord. Karoon nga kami, Lord. Overcome the doubts in the name of Jesus. Show them your word. Speak to them again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Speak strongly into their hearts, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Live. Lord, speak life to those who are destined to death. Speak strength to those who are weak. Speak prosperity to those who are in need. Speak strength to the weak. Healing to the sick. In the name of Jesus, we speak freedom to the bound. Let them be released and be delivered in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We believe in your grace. Your grace comes to us. We experience 
the miracle of your grace, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song. for you all the days of your life and that he will give you peace.